All right, I want to start off this video by saying thank you to Panda Hank 41 I'll link his channel in the description. This is his uh, mixtape of Dirk that is out. Uh, it's one of the greatest videos ever I've ever seen. I just love this video. I've watched it so many times. He does great Dallas Mavericks mixtapes and highlight reels of every game. I would check him out if you're interested. He's really good. Um, there's also clips of players talking about Dirk in this video. I think it's, it's a great video in general. That's definitely worth the watch. But I just wanted to put some Dirk highlights up behind what I wanted to talk about. Um, and today what I'm going to talk about is the man himself, Dirk Nowitzki. He is getting his jersey retired today uh, on the 5th of January. Um, and Dirk is, as many Mavs fans, my favorite player of all time. Uh, he definitely, I'm a little bit weird for all Mavs fans. I've said this before. And I'll, I'll explain to you how Dirk got me into basketball, um, helped me through some rough times in my life, uh, really got me, and inadvertently got me friends and stuff like that. Um, so this, the 2011 finals is the first time I ever really watched basketball. Uh, I was 10 at the time and I was living in, in Dayton area, which is around Cincinnati. Um, I had recently moved to the Dayton area from Michigan. Uh, I didn't really have many ties to Michigan. I was always a Reds fan and a Bengals fan, but never super, super into sports. But all my buddies at school and everybody at school was talking about LeBron James and how he's going to crush the Mavericks. And, you know, I I didn't want to hear that. You know, sometimes when you're younger, especially me, I just like to root for the young underdog, and I just didn't want LeBron to win. Uh, my perspective on that has changed a bit, but definitely in that series I would root for Dirk 100 out 100 times. Uh so, I watched Game 2 was the first one that I ever watched. I actually missed Game 1. Uh, and that's when Dirk made that amazing comeback. I believe it was 18 points in 7 minutes or something like that. Uh, he had that little... He had that spin around Chris Bosh. I promise he will be in this video. Um, and that's the instant I fell in love with basketball. I was enamored by him. How is this goofy-looking white guy just putting out so many points about... Goofy looking white guy I never heard of at the time. Putting up so many points on players like LeBron and Dwayne Wade. You know, I probably knew four people in the league, but LeBron and Dwayne Wade were two of them. And it was crazy to me. And the team itself was different than the Heat. It wasn't just a three man show. It was everybody was involved. Yeah, Dirk was the one getting a lot of buckets, but you know, everybody was involved. There's Jason Kidd, there's JJ Bray, there's Tyson Chandler, you know, all that and I just really made me realize how much more of a team sport basketball is. Oh my god, that was disgusting. Um, <laughs> so, that really made me enjoy it a lot. Um, the next year, I watched as many Mavs games as I could. Uh, and if you ever talk to me, I've always said I'm technically a bandwagon fan. Uh, you know, I've stuck with the Mavs ever since 2011. Uh, no playoff wins, nothing. It's also the reasons I say that the Ma no, no professional team that I root for has won a championship since I started rooting for them. I know the Mavs did, but I don't count it. I wasn't a true Mavs fan until probably two years later. Uh, you know, it was a blossoming uh, fandom. You know, I, I would always play as this team in 2K. I was a big 2K guy. The first time I ever beat my brother in 2K was with a Mavs team. I think I put up like 30 with Dirk. Um killed my brother and and then i beat him after that with the uh, clippers teams but that's n neither here nor there uh dirk like i said i would always uh, dirk got me in playing 2k i played 2k a lot throughout high school and middle school um i would always make big men like dirk you know a little bit of a post player play some defense even though dirk didn't have great defense but that's the type of player i'm making 2k and i always name him dork novatsky because it could never be a, as good as Dirk Nowitzki. Um, so, and through 2K, I did meet a lot of people that I've had good friendships with, um, whether they're online, a couple of people in person, uh, that probably got me through a pretty shitty time in my life. I, high school kind of sucked. Um, and Dirk always was one of those things I could go back on, just play with him, play a little 2K, play with people I liked. Uh, and just, you know, go back and watch them at home. Excuse me. Go back and watch them at home and, you know, just brighten up things a little bit. 
Um, another thing I want to talk about is this jersey right here. You know, uh, I don't think I've ever talked about it. I collect jerseys. Um, I own about, I think, 30 in total, about 25 basketball jerseys. Uh, this was this and my Joey Votto jersey were the first ones I ever gotten. This is not the original one. Um, I got this probably when I was 13. Someone ripped my original one, or else it'd probably still fit. Honestly, I bought it pretty big. But um, I'm assuming not many people know much about Cincinnati, but Cincinnati is a huge baseball city. So the fact that I bought this jersey and Joey Votto, the Reds' best player in my lifetime, at the same time means so much. Uh, Dirk has always been my favorite basketball player. He's probably a top two athlete of all time. If I'm talking about my favorite athletes, it truly is either him or Joey Votto. I think they're both just amazing people. I think they both just strive to win and they play their heart out. And it's something that you can take away from. Uh, them both having a good sense of humor, them both being competitive uh, and being humble at the same time is something you can learn from. I, I think after that, you know, I think most of my jerseys are Mavs jerseys. Uh, the next jersey I got was my Steve Nash jersey, uh, Mavs one, and then my Jason Kidd. I've always, oh, I forgot, I also got a John Wall jersey in between that. Uh, but, you know, I've always thought Dirk was amazing. Uh, you know, when he retired, it was pretty emotional for me. I always wanted to go see him in person which is a little hard when you're in Cincinnati and the closest stadium to you is four hours away and you're in school. So it never really worked out because they always played the Pacers or the Pistons during the day. Or not during the day, on weekdays. So it, it never really worked out. I'm pretty upset about that. My goal now is to at least see Luca. But Dirk really has, not only has he changed me, he did change basketball. Um, you know, he really did prove that he could be a stretch big in this league, succeed. Um, I think he has one of the best, if not the best, uh, playoff runs ever in 2011. Uh, I think his impact of the game it will be felt for a long time. You know, LeBron uses that little post fade. Everybody used that little kick that he developed, you know, I've seen the documentary for Dirk. I've done all of the stuff. I, I just love him to death. I've always always wanted to go see him play. I always wanted something to sign, but it, it just never happened. Oh, that play was amazing. Um, you know, I, I definitely didn't see the height of his career, which would have been around 08. I saw the tail end. So I don't truly understand, uh, which is the crazy thing that I even love him this much. Um, he did. He definitely was someone that got me through some rough days, you know, to be able to go home and watch him just dominate some people. Uh, I wish the Maps could have won more with him, but at least they got the one. And I guess that's all I really want to talk about. Thank you again to Panda Hank. Thank you, Dirk. Uh, this jersey retirement, I think, was a year too late, but, you know, you definitely wanted fans in the crowd for it. Alright, uh, thanks for watching guys, if you did, I appreciate it.